Hey guys, my name is Andre and welcome to the AI print on demand prompting beginner's guide. The goal of this video is to take you from zero to little knowledge of how to prompt AI for your print on demand business and get you all the way to being able to take something from an idea to an executed design using AI tools. If we structure our prompts a certain way, we'll save time on the back end when we're processing our images. We're going to avoid having really useless designs that we're wasting our credits on, and we will be upping the quality of our designs overall. To do that, we're going to try to understand the whys as well as the hows of how we structure our prompts when we are using our AI tools. And after we understand the whys and hows, and we understand the structure of how we are going to build our prompts, we will together go through two full examples of how to build a prompt to output a completed design. Well, let's start with talking about what the main problem with using an AI tool is. So ultimately, we're just trying to go from a huge number of possible designs and narrow it down to the small set of designs that we can work with easily and that have a good output for print on demand. So what is our end goal? Our end goal is that we have a transparent background design that we can upload into whatever our print-on-demand platform of choice is. And we also need that design to look pretty good and be appropriate for whatever niche that we're entering. And ultimately, the central question is, how do we get there more efficiently? We can start by going backwards and thinking about What's the final step before we put something up onto a print-on-demand marketplace? The final step is removing the background, so we have to make it easy to do that when we prompt our AI. And the easiest way to do that is to ask for a certain type of background. And the simplest way to accomplish that is asking for a flat, dark gray background. You can also use white or black, but I've found that dark gray does a better job of being easy to remove after you've downloaded the image. That's the first piece of our prompt. So that narrows us down from all different kinds of backgrounds down to a very specific kind of solid colored background, which will be much easier to process on the back end right before we upload our design. So this simple addition can save you tons of time. So what else do we need to consider? We need to think about the type of canvas that we're putting our design on. And if you are primarily an Amazon seller like I am, that means that you're putting it on dark shirts because that's what sells the most. So how do we make sure that it looks good on a dark colored shirt? We just put in this very simple addition. Font color is white. So not only does this make the font that color, it also affects the rest of the design because the AI tool at least understands that it needs to have a color palette that works for that font color. So now we have flat dark gray background and font color is white. I know that doesn't seem like much, but just including those things will make your AI prompts be a lot more on target because if you think about it, we're going from tens of thousands or more possibilities, and we're narrowing it down to something that's close to what we can use when we're processing and uploading a design. So now we're going to further constrain the prompt in order to get good outputs. The main things we need to avoid are really bad font choices, the wrong things being emphasized in the design, and using images that are too realistic or complex to look good in print-on-demand. And ultimately, when we are looking at prompting AI, we are looking to provide as many useful constraints as we can find to make the output something that we could use. And a lot of the final touches on this prompting process is going to depend on the niche that you are in. So here we are with our major constraints, and then we need to start adding to these major constraints to be more specific to the design that we are trying to make. My starting point is always font is a simple, easy to read font. I use this as a starting point for 80% or more of the prompts that I use. But if you know more about exactly what you're looking for, you can be way more dialed in. For example, you could use some of these additions to the prompt instead. 
font is a feminine script font, font is a vintage display font, or font is a childish font. In addition to describing the font, if you're having trouble getting a good output, you can also tell the AI who the font is for. You can say font is for women, or font is for children. You could also decide to use different emotions or make it themed a certain way. For example, you could say font is a happy font, font shows optimism, or font is aggressive, or font is angry. If we're looking at a Halloween themed type of font, we could say font is spooky. There are a ton of different directions you can take it, and you're just going to need to experiment for yourself to see what gives you the outputs you're looking for. So if you watched my other video about non-designer design principles, I've already talked about visual hierarchy, which is just a fancy way to say what gets looked at first. And in the typography heavy types of designs that do well on Amazon, we need to make sure that the text is a central feature that gets looked at very quickly. But we have to tell our AI tool to do that. So let's go through three quick examples of how we might do that. We can say design emphasizes the words and input our phrase. We can say typography design. And we can say primarily typographical design. All of these will communicate to the AI that you want the words to be a central feature. This will make sure that we have big bold letters on the shirt and we're not having it be a small part of the design, maybe in a speech bubble, which is really common when you're prompting AI generators. So now let's move on to the last bit of the prompt, the image part of the prompt. Images that do well on print on demand tend to be more on the simple side. We're talking about simple 2D demonstrations of a concept. It could be a cartoon animal. It could even be as simple as a silhouette. But unless you tell your AI to output something that simple, it's going to come up with sometimes some pretty realistic images. And most of the time in print on demand, it's simple that sells. So how do we increase the quality of the images that we're getting when we make our prompts? We can include a phrase like design includes a silhouette of followed by whatever our item or character is, or something like includes a simple simple flat cartoon image of followed by a description of what you're looking for. But the most important thing is making sure that we're getting back something that is a little bit more on the simple end. Okay, so that's the end of the theoretical portion of the guide. Thank you for sticking with me. I really think that it's important to understand why we're doing what we're doing so that we can get better continuously at making our prompts. So now let's put all of this theoretical learning and talk about structures to use in some AI prompts and do it together. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to input our things that we input every single time. We are going to use background is dark gray, font is white, and design is typography based. But like we went over in the theoretical portion, adding these make it easier to process things on the back end and make it a little bit more compatible for the shirt colors we are most likely to sell on. Now let's get into the prompt specifics for the design that we're trying to make. So the first design we're trying to make is we want to do a husband gag gift design. So what kind of phrase might work for this kind of design? Maybe something like me waiting for my wife to get ready because that's a common relationship theme. So since it is a gag gift, Let's think about how we might be able to make this a funny design. We have to kind of come up with an idea of what would go with that phrase that would make it a funny shirt design. It kind of makes sense to me that since we're talking about waiting forever, we think about things that imply that you're waiting and imply that it's taking a very long time. Now, I don't know what you guys do when you're waiting, but I frequently find myself sipping on coffee. So I want to include sipping coffee somehow. So now let's think about the it's taking forever part of things. Something that could imply something taking forever is instead of it being a person sipping coffee, maybe it could be a skeleton sipping coffee. So we could start with something basic like a skeleton sipping coffee. But we can't forget to make sure that the image that's used is simple enough for print on demand. So we could use words like flat, simple, white, cartoon, skeleton, 
taking a sip from a cup of coffee. So we've already built the bones of the prompt. Pun intended. So let's see what ideogram gives us if we just put it in. Okay, so these outputs aren't bad, but I'm seeing things that we might want to avoid. So let's play with the prompt to make it give us an output that we like. So in my opinion, the best ones seem to be from the torso up. Okay, let's see what happens if we make that modification. And as a side note, I really don't like the full skeleton. It makes it look like the skeleton is a child instead of an adult. Okay, so I pressed generate probably eight or nine times to get to these results. It's not bad. Uh, could it have gone better? Maybe. But the thing about AI designs is that they're relatively cheap. You're not paying a designer, you're just modifying a prompt and you get to hit generate as many times as you want. Okay, so that was just one example. So we have one more example to do. So let's pick a very different feeling niche to see if we can get an AI prompt that can give us a full phrase plus image kind of design. How about a feminine type of design? How about people do ballet bar, right? So let's do a ballet bar exercise themed t-shirt design. So let's look at how we might structure a phrase plus image design for this type of niche. Okay, so first let's add our basic constraints. Background is dark gray, font is white. Design is typography based. What did I put last time? Typography design. Here, let's, let's be consistent. Okay, so now we're going to start tweaking it to fit that niche, which is a very different niche than the one we were just prompting for. So the first thing you would do would be to pick a phrase. If I don't know way too much about the niche, I just, I talk to chat GPT and I try and figure out some kind of pun. In this case, since it's ballet bar, it's very obvious that you can make a pun that has something to do with going to a bar. So let's add a phrase that includes that kind of a pun. Now we talked about using silhouettes in our designs and that's still a tried and true method. So let's demonstrate that here. Okay, so design includes a silhouette of ballet shoes and we need to make sure that the font is feminine. So let's paste this bit in here. Font is easy to read and feminine. All right, so let's see what we get when we hit generate. And to save time, I'm gonna hit it three times and then narrow it from there. Okay, so these are our results. Uh, some of them aren't bad. This one over here is usable. This one over here, I probably wouldn't use that one, uh, but that's it. So how could we modify this prompt to make it better? I just realized it's funny. This The one that I uh, preferred is one of the simple, easy to read ones that's not necessarily a feminine font, but the ones that look the best include a mix of easy to read fonts and feminine fonts. So maybe we could ask for that in the design. Fonts include one font that is easy to read and one font that is a feminine script font. I also noticed that the silhouettes looked better when they were placed at the top or the bottom of the design. So let's modify that to be a silhouette of ballet shoes at the bottom of the design. We'll do two of those and then we'll do top of the design. That one's pretty decent. So of the ones that are at the bottom with the shoes at the bottom, I press it twice. This one has kind of a different feel this one has a different feel. Oh, that's pretty cool. This one's all right. Uh, I like this vintage font, this vintage style. Um, I like this swoosh. So I would actually use this and remove the ballet slippers. Sometimes you just get something that looks good. And these full silhouette ones don't look as good as the ones that kind of have the, the white space in there, the empty space. So this is something that is useful too. So let's click, let's uh, favorite the ones that turned out okay. Okay, so these are the ones we're left with. Some of them I would probably just remove the silhouette of the shoes or modify it just a little bit. But these aren't terrible outputs if we're looking for a full design where all we need to do is remove the background. So after doing some Googling, I realized after the fact that it frequently in ballet bar, 
you are not wearing ballet shoes and you're just going barefoot. But, you know, that's the importance of looking at your niches before you start prompting or designing for them. Anyway, I just found that funny. But that doesn't invalidate the prompting process. So that blunder about the ballet shoes aside, I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that it helps you to understand how you might structure a prompt in order to get an output that you're looking for. And I hope that the mistakes and the tweaking that we did together in Ideogram kind of gives you an idea of what it might feel like to be tweaking and constructing prompts to look for a finished design. But all the prompting skills in the world are not going to help you if you don't find and select good ideas to start your prompts off with to begin with. So if you want to make sure that you understand how to pick winning phrases and design ideas through simply talking to ChatGPT, I would check out this video over here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in that video.